I just recently finished a journal and I have a little ceremony that I use to start a new journal, end an old journal, start a new journal. I use the word ceremony, uh, not because it's like magical, but because in the agile world uh, where I work, I work with agile project management, uh, we have ceremonies and they're typically meetings or they're just events that we do regularly between and after and before things. So you'll hear, hear me use the word ceremony because I think of it as that way, is that I'm you know, ending an old journal and starting with a new journal. Uh, and the little things that I do to make that just as smooth as possible. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that I use very inexpensive journals, so if you mess up, you mess up. It's not too bad. So anyway, I'm Scott. I founded penandjournal.com. I help people use journaling to increase their focus and their productivity and their mindfulness. And uh, I would like to connect with you. I've got a Facebook and an Instagram account that uh, you, the links are in the description. If you could just connect with me, that'd be awesome. Uh, also, if you like the content, like and subscribe would be wonderful. Um, look forward to get to know you a little better. All right, so let's go. Okay, so part of this ceremony is finishing off your old journal. As you go through it, I always leave uh, some extra pages in the back. So I never use all of my journal. I always leave, you know, seven or ten pages in the back. The reason being is when I come back to review this in a year or review this or if I use my index to look for what I'm hunting down, um, it's nice to take a note or two or to scribble in there or draw a picture or tape something on it. If it's, if you know, I've, I have some journals where I have like a picture tape there or something like that. So anyway, always leave a few pages in the back of the old journal. And then uh, part of the ceremony also is to review your index. So I always set up an index, and you'll see this on the new journal, um, where I, when I do a review of what's in there, I use the date, and then I use kind of a, a one word or a title or some sort of thing, you know, goal review on 720. So it must have been the beginning of the month, so I was looking at goals. Um, or I had a productivity idea on the 4th. So... Uh, on the pages that I have, I use dates up in the upper right hand corner and it kind of tells me where things are. So I don't really need to number, you know, in the bullet journal, you have this concept of numbered pages. Uh, but since I put a date in the up, it's the same thing. It, it gets me to the, it gets me close enough to where I need to be that if I find something that I did a retrospective research on 6.3, I could probably hunt that down and get, get close enough in my journal to find it, uh, fairly quickly. So... That's what I do uh, at the end of the journal when, I'm, when I have those few pages left. I will go in and actually do a quick review of what I've got. I can see here that I probably didn't record the last week or so of things in my index, which is fine. You know, I do it in bulk where, you know, I do these three things at one sitting. So that might have been a whole week that I only did that review once per week. So um, anyway, finish that off. My particular, this particular journal... Uh, started on the 4th and ended on the 15th, which was just uh, recently. Um, so anyway, that's what I do to finish the journal. So this is a matter, part of the ceremony is finishing your old journal. And then you grab your new journal. Um, first things first, put your name on it. Uh, this one is, the other one I had, had 100 sheets at uh, but it was wide rule. This has 80 sheets and it's college rule. So it's a little different. But first thing I do is, uh, you know, put names on it. You can see that I've already started to write in this one because I'm impatient and I get going pretty fast on these things. Um, I do have a list of guys that I'm praying for uh, at church and I transferred that in from the other one. That list continues to grow. Um, what I will do in the beginning of using a journal is I'll start up, I'll set up my index page uh, first, you know, journal setup idea. This happened to be something I was writing about uh, as the video idea for this video. Um, if you've seen in my other video, which I, I will post up here in the cards, I always have a little pack of uh, post-it notes back here to try to, um, you know, in case I have an idea, these are good list, list holders that I can move around and rip up when I'm done. So that's how I do it. Um, I just noticed uh, a minute ago that my uh, fountain pen is running out of ink, and so I'm going to just fill that up right here on video, and hopefully I don't make a mess of things and ruin, you know, ruin everything around. So hang on a second. Be right back. Let me get the, uh, the supplies. All right. So first things first, got to get a lot of paper towels because if things go south, you can ruin, you know, ruin a lot of stuff. 
Um, I use diamine ink uh, th at this time. I, it's not something I preferred. It was on sale. I got a red one. I got Oxblood uh, red and Oxford blue. Both of these are awesome. Oxblood is just such a cool red color. It's more of a, well, it looks like Oxblood. It's it's really cool. One of the older ones that I had was uh, a blue from Ebron, J. Ebron, um, which is actually a pretty cool ink too, but I'm not using that one. Uh, Oxford blue is the one that I continue to use. I can go back to this over and over. It's just so dark. It looks really good on white paper. So anyway, um, the pen, uh, I'm, I'm low enough in my ink that, let me open this up. I'm gonna move my journal out of the way because I've, I've done this before and spilled and it's been a mess. Um, but right now, the way the Twisby Eco works is that it's got, the ink is in the body, it doesn't have a cartridge. Uh, and you use this uh, uh, twist, this dial on the back and it moves this plunger up and down. But it, this is too far, so I can't, you know, I can't really see what's going on in there. So I don't have enough ink in there. So what I end up doing is using some kind of a hacky, uh, I found this is, it holds earplugs for shooting. Um, I think, um, I don't know where I got it, but I don't really shoot, so. Anyway, had it. So what I'll do is I'll pour uh, some ink into this smaller container and then I'll dial this thing down. Let me push this down. So then you can kind of see that there's a dial in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it's, it's kind of a spiral, kind of a screw shape. This thing comes out so you can clean it. And I'll bury it into the ink. Pull out as much as I can. And then it's reasonably full at that point. Now the thing with the Twisby Eco, let me close up this little ink well that I have, a little handmade ink, you know, that it's not even ink well, but anyway. Um, and then the way this works is that the capillary action, um, what we did is we put ink in this way by pulling the plunger this way. And so a as ink comes out, it uses kind of a capillary action, but what happened is that there's now an imbalance in here and it's kind of just the way this ink, uh, twist. Uh, Twisby works is that the pressure is not right. So the way you solve that is if I had gloves on, I would just pull it off and show you, but let me use the, the thing. You take this and you kind of pull it out and it, and then you reseat it in there. And this is even instructions on the, the Twisby um, documentation that you get with a pen. But what that does is it re it resets the, the balance of pressure in there so that you're ready to go. Um, I always have post-it notes around. So then we're ready to write. So now we're full. Ready to go. Uh, I only got a few drops of ink on me, uh, which is pretty good. Typically I have ink on both fingers up and down. So anyway, that's how you ink up a nice Twisby Eco. Um, be sure you put your caps on your, your ink or you'll get it all over the place. Um, and then that's how you, kind of the ceremony between an old, uh, a used journal and how you tidy that one up, set up your index, make sure you record what you've got in there so you can go back to it quickly. And then your new journal, uh, you know, transfer over anything important that you want to keep track of. Make sure you get your post-it notes in there and then set up your index page. So super duper easy, a very simple way to transfer from one journal to the next journal and really not lose a beat. You can just do this in a matter of a minute or two. So that's how it goes. Okay, so you see how I do it? Super simple. It's supposed to be quick. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to keep you from having to spend a lot of time setting up a month. I oftentimes see others that are like, help me, you know, watch me set up my journal for July. And boy, they spend a lot of time setting up their journal when I'm setting up journals in about two and a half minutes. So uh, again, I do things iteratively, always process improve, always trim off the things that I don't use. Uh, when it comes to journaling and productivity, uh, that's, that's key. Okay, that's it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.